Well, households are taking on more debt, a lot more. In fact, they now owe a record amount of it. But if all that borrowing conjures up images of 2008, there are differences this time around, as Steve Leisman explains. The New York Federal Reserve reports that household debt across the nation has hit a dubious milestone. It finally surpassed the peak of 2008 and now stands at $12.7 trillion. So is there a reason to worry that another financial crisis could be brewing? It's impossible to say, but debt is substantially different now from the debt run-up that led to the financial crisis. The debt service cost right now um, is at a lower level, mostly because interest rates are lower. If you go back to uh, pre-crisis levels, interest rates were at a higher uh, rate. So the cost of carrying debt for households was higher than that it is now. Since 2008, the population has also grown. So while total debt is higher, debt per capita is now just $48,000. That compares to $53,000 at the peak. And default rates are quite a bit lower, as many have taken on only the debt they can repay. The confidence of re repaying the uh, debt is high at this point. I'm being very cautious since the 2008 debacle. But that's not true for all types of debt. Auto and student loan debts have been increasing, and student loan default rates are in the double digits. My debt level is pretty high because I recently finished um, college, and I have over 14000 to pay off. Me and my husband just recently purchased a home, so my, um, my debt level has increased recently because of that. More household debt can be a sign of confidence in the economy, but it can hold back growth if it gets too high. Going forward, it can be seen as a headwind, a sign of strain in the economy uh, that can hold consumers back. We would need to see more uh, or continued job strength, uh, more wage growth going forward if we wanted to be able to maintain these levels. Compared with 2008, more mortgages are going to those with the highest credit scores. That means fewer defaults, but it also means big parts of the population just can't get credit to buy homes, and that's bad for growth and bad for the economy long term. For Nightly Business Report, I'm Steve Leisman.